Hello everyone. My name is Rosie Stancer and I'm delighted to have been invited by Professors Without Borders to talk to you and to answer some of their questions. The answers I hope you will find informative, useful and, and also fun. Although I have to confess I'm finding even the first straightforward question difficult to answer, which is where do I work? I could never fill in forms and answer these sorts of questions easily because I guess I just don't fit into a pigeonhole per se. The best I can answer to that is I work all over the globe, but for the most part in extreme environments, anywhere from Antarctica to the Arctic from the frozen ice of Siberia to the hot sands of the Omani Desert. I am an explorer. What do I like about my career, my job? Well, I like not fitting into pigeonholes, clearly. And I do enjoy not being cooped up in an office all day, every day of the week, which is fine if you're passionate and get a buzz about what you're doing. In those offices and that being said I do spend a long time half a day normally at my own desk doing the necessary planning and preparations for any of my expeditions what I love about my job is that stepping out into the unknown treading where hasn't been trodden before ready in anticipation of the discoveries that one hopes one's about to make, come back and share with others like yourselves. What I like less about the job is that expeditions have a life unto themselves. It's like setting up a whole business. It's not all about that glamorous martini first step on the ice or the sands. All the preparatory work, and logistics that go on beforehand and the fundraising. And I find, for instance, walking into a boardroom full of people and pitching to them far more terrifying than daring to jump over a crevasse, falling through the ice or coping with the threat of polar bears. Give me that any day. It's also, I think, quite an important question because I think there are different sorts of fear. And whilst I seem to flourish on the fear of coping in the wilderness. I find that this other sort of fear that I mentioned, the stressful fear, is a corrosive one. And whilst we all must expect to have in small part aspects of our, our jobs and careers that we don't enjoy, and therefore perhaps we're not especially good at that bit, um, we have to learn to cope with them, but they should not take up too much of that job because I do think that it is corrosive and life is too short quite frankly. How did I get my job? Well really rather by chance and it was all about seizing an opportunity. To seize an opportunity you have to always be aware, you have to keep your antennae up and I was listening to the radio and I heard an advertisement for a selection uh, process for the first ever all um, women British team to the North Pole quite a few years ago. My antennae shot up and um, I seized the initiative. I just, something in me, it was, a, it was a gut reaction. I just knew that this was for me and that this was the right path to follow and it was but a doorway onto greater and important things. It wasn't always my goal to work in this this area. I used to be in the, the um, luxurious, pink, fluffy world of hotel public relations, which I loved talking and dealing with people all the time. And as in any job that you pursue, if you love it, you're, you're good at it. And I, I was actually good at it. Um, so why did I forsake it to follow the rocky career path of exploration? Um, again, it was an instinct um, that something important was going to come out of my world of exploration. And its odds were stacked against me. I mean, in those days, back in the, the um, early 90s, you know, 
the notion of women venturing onto either polar ice cap was unheard of. Why not? Why not tread into this brave new world where no women had trodden before? That, to me, wasn't a disadvantage. It was an added incentive. How difficult is it to get into my industry? Well, it's a very close-knit circle, um, but it's a very friendly one. And uh, once you're in there, people really are enthusiastic about helping others. So don't be frightened of knocking on doors. What I would say is that if you want to go into big expeditions, like polar expeditions, that's when it starts getting tough because it's very expensive, they're very costly. Um, and of course, as you can imagine these days, it's very difficult to get uh, commercial sponsorship on those levels, but it's never impossible. What advice would I give to students looking to start their career in this industry? I would say, don't do it for the money. You're not likely to make, make much unless you're going to crack a good television deal. And why not? Particularly women listening to this, because there are uh, not enough female explorer presenter faces out there. Why not have a go? Um, don't do it for vanity. In extreme envir environments, that'll probably kill you. Do it out of passionate belief in the preservation of your your planet, of learning fresh knowledge, making discoveries, coming back and sharing them with others. What is the number one skill necessary? Um, well, it's skills really in this business are acquired uh, through experience as you go along. But I'd say... Um, Character traits you need are um, courage, dedication, commitment, team spirit. Um, and above all, uh, I know it's an on-trend word, but resilience. And if you look up the word resilience, it says flexibility. And flexibility is all about strength, not rigidity, which is uh, brittle. And when we talk about strength, I don't mean um, biceps. Uh, I mean strength of of head and heart. It's it's your gentle inner strength. Um, it equips you well because in any major endeavour, quite often there comes a stage when you're physically just a husk, and the thing that drives you on, propels you, is your inner strength your mind, your determination. And same too with, with any job in the tough times. What keeps you going is your determination and that end goal clearly in focus in your head. It's all in here, it's not in there. How important are degrees, networking and work experience to get your first job in the industry? I don't have a degree. Well, I do. I have an honorary degree for my research, but of course I didn't have to turn many pages for that. <clears throat> anyway, um, it's very different now because I think these days, uh, you know, it is more important to have that safety net of a degree under your wing. Um, and there are various branches of the world of expedition work that do demand degrees if you're going to go into one of the um, say the British Antarctic Survey, uh, the Royal Geographical Society, some of the research bases, etc. Anything from geography to engineering to a variety of scientific uh, subjects in degrees would be um, very valuable indeed. Otherwise, of course, of inestimable value is networking. Again, as in any any walk of of life, listening and learning to people, not being frightened of asking and also allowing time and generosity of heart to help others back as part of your networking because all the people you meet are like rungs in the ladder up towards your end goal and your achievement. And also you'll 
find things go in circles and maybe later on they will help you or you them in, for instance, uh, fundraising or sponsorship, etc. Same too with, with work experience. Just go for everything you can in the field. Try everything out. You never know what what it might transpire that you, you uh, enjoy and do well. And it's all feathers in, in your hat um, and helps you decide uh, where you're going to ultimately specialise, you know, what ignites you. How did my background uh, shape my own professional success? Well, I'm not sure if, um, I'm not sure if it did, maybe it's for you to judge, but I was brought up by parents who were considerably older than most other people's parents. So I was alone much of the time, left up to my own devices, if it weren't for some rather fearsome um, nannies. And I was sent up to a, a preparatory boarding school in the Highlands, hundreds of miles from home, age seven. But before you call out social welfare workers, I loved it. Great adventure. And I think it instilled in me a sense of um, independence, undoubtedly a sense of adventure and camaraderie with uh, the other girls who were in the same situation. Do I have time for additional activities outside of work? And do I have a balanced lifestyle? No, I don't think I do. My whole life seems to be all about expedition and expedition work. When I wake up in the morning, I'm straight out for several hours of training. Then I come back and I'm mentally charged up as well and I knuckle down to um, logistics. Um, I might do some work on my book, I might do a podcast, I um, might do some work on my charities, etc. Uh, life is full, seven days a week. However, it is important to carve out time for those who care for you, your family, um, and I try to make sure that, that I do that, even if they do just put me on gardening squad at weekends. Um, COVID, how has COVID affected my work? Well, COVID seems to have bullied its way into all our lives, even if insidiously. I've had to postpone uh, a desert expedition in Kazakhstan this last year. So adapt, modify and be imaginative. <laughs> I ended up going with uh, my teammate. Uh, we walked the full length, over a thousand kilometres of the Monarch's Way, uh, King Charles II's escape route. And I found it enthralling. I'd never realised how much there was to our own countryside, travelling through from, from Worcestershire down through the Black Country, um, over the rolling downs of the southwest. So it just goes to show um, what adventures can be had outside your own front door and that, above all, what happens in your lives, what appears to be a setback, good can come out of setbacks. How do I think my industry is going to be affected by technology in the next 15 to 20 years? Um, well, I'm not a great technological person myself, but... Uh, it's important not to be a dinosaur um, about these things or stick your head in the sand or ice. And boots on the ground will always be needed in the world of expeditions and research and exploration. That being said, we always take a bit of uh, modern technology with us for safety and communication purposes. And if you're working in the area of serious scientific research, then it's, it's all very cutting edge. Interestingly, and without straying too much from the question, the very last question, um, when I'm on an expedition after about a week, I do tend to dispense with using most of my gadgetry, except for the safety kit, because I prefer to rely on the instinct and sense of intuition which awakens within oneself in these extreme environments. So I would say that it's important that for all the modern technology we might have access to, it's important to keep sharp 
and alive these innate senses, intuition, instinct, and just stay tuned in with your antennae up. And I would heartily recommend employing these skills in your quest to find out what career path you're going to follow. Keep the antenna up. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful life. Bye.